How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Saturday mornings with Jim Valley, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern, Sundays with Andrew Zarian. And it is Thursday here on the show, and you know what that means. Well, first off, I'm back. Got a lot to talk about here today. Man, too bad I wasn't here yesterday to talk about NXT. That was not my favorite show. However, I did uh, I did very much like that main event. Much like I liked the main event of Dynamite last night as well as the opener. Man, did I love the opener. So we got a lot to talk about here today. We've also got SmackDown coming up tomorrow, which could be... It could be the SmackDown where, for the first time in the history of professional wrestling, a pro wrestling show is number one on all of network television. The Rock will be there. Roman Reigns will be there. Logan Paul will be there wrestling. He's actually going to have a match on SmackDown facing The Miz. So we'll tell you about that. we got some other lineups as well. And then the news. When we come back from the break, got an update on Jeff Hardy, who was injured last night at the AEW Rampage tapings. Not really an update on Shotzi, which actually is kind of an update. And then we've got a story... The likes of which I don't think I've ever seen in wrestling. We're going to talk about it. And I got a call back to my own childhood. Something that happened around here. Can anyone figure out what I'm talking about? I guess we'll find out soon enough. And we've got an update on Drew McIntyre. A new AEW Dynamite set is coming. BCC versus CMLL in Arena Mexico. QT is coming back to AEW. Ratings Notes. And plenty more. If you want to text us here today, 425-780-7566. That's 425-780-7566. F4W online at gmail.com. F4W online, threads, Instagram, and Cameo. At Brian Alvarez on X. Back in a moment, Observer Live. We've almost reached the pinnacle of the tour, but this is one of the most important things. This is the computer. This is the workstation where I do the majority of the actual physical part of putting Figure 4 together. I do the writing here, the editing here, of course the phone calls, um, even the uh, microphone here when we used to do Wrestling Observer Live, which has since died. And uh, in fact, I better put the uh, screensaver on here so this doesn't get burned in the screen. But Putting the newsletter together, people understand, is it's a lot of hard work and dedication, like two to three hours per week sometimes I have to spend on it. And, um, hold on a second. Figure four, who's this? Carl Thrillo? Yeah. yeah hey, 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 listen, can I, can I call you back? I'm, I'm doing something here right now. My fridge? Yes, running. Hello? Anyway, um, this is, uh, like I said, computer, got the TV here, this is pretty much the place. This is going to be a quick tour of the trophy room. This is actually my trophy case, it's made of mahogany, very expensive. But what is worth far more than the case itself is what is inside, and that is the medals from the various sports and the accomplishments that I've achieved during my lifetime. This first drawer here is my gymnastics medal. Here, I got uh, state and such. These are my Taekwondo medals. These down here, amateur wrestling medals. And down here are the 26 medals that I won in the five kilometer walk down to the Boff Landing over the course of the past five years. And, um, you know, I realize that uh, I'm a four sports superstar right here. And some people, you know, it might, uh, might bother them that they haven't had such achievements in their life. But I think that the whole point is that you can achieve in anything. You know, if you can make a great pie, you can win the pie eating contest at the uh, Puyallup Fair. And, uh, I don't know. Hell, if you can eat a good pie, you might win the pie eating contest as well. So there's there's achievement in this life for everybody.
Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Well, let's talk some news here. I'm going to start off with this since we didn't have an update last night. So the word coming out of AEW is that Jeff Hardy does not have a concussion, but he has a broken nose. And so he was doing a match with Sammy Guevara, and Sammy hit the shooting star and landed on his face. And Jeff broke his nose, but uh, apparently other than that, everything is, you know how they say, okay. So uh, best of luck to him. As far as Shotzi, who suffered some sort of knee injury on Tuesday at the NXT tapings for this coming week, uh, we have no update, and they're being very quiet about it. And usually that's not a good thing, but I cannot sit here and tell you for sure that it is a bad thing because they're not saying anything. So anyway, she was doing a match, and uh, she was facing Lyra, I realize that some of these you will consider spoilers, but it's new, so sorry. She was facing Lyra, which had been announced last week, and uh, she flew outside and uh, injured her knee, and it was a taped show, so they were, like, stalling for time, like, what are we going to do? And then Ava appears on the big screen, and she says that Shotzi is not medically cleared to continue, and so is there anyone in the back who would like to come out and replace her? And of all people, Lash Legend came out, okay? Now, I can't say 100%, but I'd say probably 99%. I don't think Lash has ever gone out on a live show and called a match in the ring. And that's what she would have had to do here. And granted, they didn't go long. It's probably like six minutes. But apparently she went out there and did an imp- a shoot legitimate impromptu match with Lyra. I cannot wait for next week's show. I mean, hey, she's improved a ton, but what does that mean? Well, it means that, like, she used to do choreographed matches that were terrible. Now she does choreographed matches, and, you know, she looks like there's a good chance. But a non-choreographed, call it on the fly, I mean, honestly, this could be, like, a real big deal. If she does well here... I mean, they're going to want her up sooner rather than later. So we'll see what happens. But uh, that's next week on the show. So all the people in the back to do an impromptu match. Lash. Well, maybe Blair Davenport wasn't there. You know, some of the other women with experience. You got Roxanne Perez. You can't give her a title shot right now. You can't put her in that main event, you know, because you're building up to that. So, (laughs) hey, look, what do we say about... All of these folks, men and women, they're going to have to start getting better in the ring. They have got to get out of their comfort zones, and they got to work more. Well, here's a great example of Lash Legend, somebody that's over to the live crowd, somebody that's now been there for a pretty good period of time. I'm not sure how many matches she's had, but go out there with Valkyria, who's, I assume, got more experience significantly more than Lash Legend does, even if it's not a lot. But, you know, good for both of them to go out there and actually get that experience. So, and who cares? Considering that it's an NXT show, it's, yes, it is building towards Mania season and all that stuff, but at the end of the day, even if it's terrible, and it's going to have the ability to be post-produced, so there's going to be that benefit for it as well, too. You know, in the grand scheme of things, doesn't matter. It's a good learning experience for both. When I was a young boy, I'd say probably first, second grade, somewhere around there, I was a big fan of The Muppet Show. I know that's hard to believe. And it aired on the local PBS station, Channel 9. Watched it every night, 7.30. Loved The Muppet Show. And then one day... The Muppet Show got removed from PBS Channel 9. I was very, very disappointed. And you know what else? All of the other kids in my class were also very disappointed. And so we actually all got together. We all wrote letters to the local PBS affiliate. And we begged them to bring back The Muppet Show. And uh, they did. They brought it back. 
because really? of our, our letter writing campaign to the local PBS station. Oh, man, I bet you yes. some teachers got some shine out of that deal on the news. You must love that. Now, I bring this up because of this from the front page of WrestlingObserver.com. I have never heard of anything like this before. What's that? The TNA Wrestling roster is looking to find a path forward following Scott Demore's departure from the company. Members of the TNA roster publicly voiced their support for Demore on social media after the announcement. Today, Fightful published a letter that members of the roster sent to Anthem Sports and Entertainment CEO Leonard Asper and Demore. In the letter, the TNA wrestlers expressed their belief that TNA or that Demore is still the best possible person to protect TNA's present and future. Oh, wait, hold on, Brian. Let me actually read it here because it says it's time to play the music. It's time to light the lights. It's time oh, to meet the Muppets. Oh, stop that. Oh. We feel strongly, the letter said, that a wrestling person, in quotes, needs to be intimately involved at a high level to ensure the amazing company we have all built and product we have provided to our fans continues to grow and flourish. It is our opinion that the best possible person for that role was, is, and will be Scott. They have arranged a letter-writing campaign to <laughs> Anthem to bring back Scott Demore. Bros, has that ever happened in wrestling? I hope, I hope Dude, this is 40 chess. This hold is the on greatest a second. booking ever. I've been around a long time, and I've seen a lot, okay? I can't ever remember... Like the head booker of a company being ousted, and the roster all got together to do a letter writing campaign <laughs> to ownership to please bring this person back. Has it happened? That tells you, by the way, about what they thought of Scott Demore. Yeah. Has it happened in some form in Japan with a group at some point or another to any varying degree? I don't know. I, I would have to go back and look that up. But, yeah, I mean, this is just a business decision that was made by Anthem that is not very good. And they have gone about it in the worst of ways because they misrepresented it to the talent. And how do you lose all of the faith? You get rid of somebody who's there because essentially – you can't work with them anymore because you're kind of tired of telling them you're not going to spend any more money and you're not going to do anymore. And he goes and leaves and you misrepresent why he left to the talent. And then you're in this situation where, again, you find out maybe if you're a talent, you didn't know that Demore had offered to buy the company, which really drives you nuts. I mean, look at the response that this has gotten. This may be a Rossi O'Gallo situation if Scott Demore can actually somehow land a TV channel or a TV deal of some kind anywhere in the world that, you know, <laughs> maybe the wrestlers start going over and join him as opposed to sticking around with Anthem because what are you getting out of Anthem besides a lot of cuts? A lot of cuts were made at the end of last year. A lot of people forget about this. That gets wiped away in the fact that they've had a good start to the year and creatively they've been doing well. They were slicing that thing to the bone at the end of the year with people not resigning and them not resigning people. So this whole deal with Demore is a, a bad deal, but it's all a business deal and it all lies at the feet of Anthem. Not only for Demore, but for Ed Nordholm too, who apparently was at least trying to do something to rally up the company and trying to get them to spend money and okaying that sort of thing. He's out of the job now too. This is a rough road right now for Anthem. We remain steadfast and hopeful that this letter can be a first step to opening and keeping open productive lines of communication to ensure the TNA Impact family continues to be a wonderful, unique place to work for years to come. We ask and implore you both to come together and create a resolution that will reunite this family once again. Well, if they wrote that letter to uh, Leonard Asper, well, that ain't going to help much. We have to write another letter here. Can I ask you a question? On. What kind of great PBS donor did you have that was able to get a network show like The Muppet Show aired on your local PBS affiliate and reruns? I don't know, brother. I don't know how the whole thing. I'm going to ask my mom what hard. happened because she'd remember better than me. I can't even remember five years ago, much less 1982, but it definitely happened. Back in a moment, Observer Live. You know, that was a very special night for me. Um, 
and I've listened to Cody about it. It's not one of his, it's not his top match, he says, but man, it's mine. You know what I mean? It's uh, very special in my heart. And to do that at 50, right, is a, uh, it's just a, it's a great achievement for somebody like me, man. It really is to be in my kind of my, st- my shape still in good shape to be able to go out there with the young, young kids and pull things off. Um, it's, it's so amazing. You know, when I was so nervous when we, you know, Cody's music hit and he broke the throne with a sledgehammer and all that, I'm just waiting for my, my entrance. Right. And this new, upstart company AEW I didn't know how the fans would respond to me uh whether they would boo me or whether they would you know cheer me or whatever so I'm so nervous and I'm so laser focused on what I'm doing but it it was like god my butterflies in my stomach were crazy my music hit and they responded in kind and I was like okay it's not so bad and I'm always like that as soon as I go through the tunnel it goes away Right. And then I'm laser focused on what I need to do, man. And it's like it was good to feel that reaction from the a new fan base that had watched me my whole career, but they're different than WWE fans. To go down there and you know, um I've explained this before and it's let's see if you can understand it. I step in the ring, right, and they start chanting Dusty's name, right? Which really just Oh man, you know, chills on your on your body. You're in the moment. You're so laser focused, and you hear that for a moment because I point to the to the sky. I point up, and they started to chant Dusty, and then all of a sudden, the sound and everybody in the arena has become blurry to me. Right, I can hear them, but I can't hear them. I can see them, but I can't. I'm so focused on Cody and what we need to do right now to get it to where it is. Because for years and years, I was told, no, it wasn't good enough to be on WrestleMania or whatever. So we had a thing to prove here. And I was focused about it. And we probably could have done a couple things wrong in that match, and it still wouldn't have mattered. It was so good. The story was built in. One promo apiece. They were ready for it. All the stars aligned. The magic happens. And we struck lightning. And it was really cool to do. And I think that match will go down in history as, as, you know, one of the greatest matches of all time. You know, there's some great matches out there. But I think it really, it it holds water. I think it, it's going to be talked about for 10 years from now. You know, 15, 20 years from now. Right, now there's a mystery I have to solve. All right. Go to the Seattle Times archive here. Yes, of course I agree. God. No, I, what I, are you looking for here exactly? What happened with that Muppet show? On PBS? I'm asking my, uh, my mother as well. I just don't remember it being on, and I, that was in D.C. Oh, so God, I, I got to go through 401 records? Uh, maybe uh. it was. I don't know. I remember, like, 321 Contact and... The Electric Company and all that sort of stuff. Rita yeah. Moreno had a big crush on as a little kid because of the Electric Company reruns. This Very might, good. This might be a while. Anyway, well, we yeah. got more we got to talk about here. More Muppets? Cool. I'm actually great with that. Let's talk about the history of Fozzie. Not the band. Not the band. The bear. The bear. Actually, you know what the hell with it. Let's actually, no, it's not the, the Muppets. It's not the Muppets, but, um, you know, also when I was a kid... I'll tell you how old I am, everybody. You know it's a slow oh. news day when I'm telling you how old I am. How old are you? I'm so dang old that I remember when McDonald's play places were outside. Yeah. Not inside. Oh, man, they used to give you the glasses. Do you remember the glasses from the Muppet Show? They had a McDonald's play place oh. near Highway 99 in Linwood. I don't know why the hell we went all the way out there, but 
And it was a big old play place. Your family was on the land. Actually, they had another one. Uh, they had another one. Now I'm thinking about it in Kenmore. And uh, you know, it's funny. Is is my daughter? Uh, they're they're redoing downtown Bothell, and you know, there there's an area that they're going to be rebuilding, and and it's like, you know, what do you want to go in there, or whatever? And and Paisley goes, I want a McDonald's in there. And it's like <laughs> you do realize that when I was a kid, there actually was a McDonald's right there, and they tore oh, she, it down to build this, and now they're going to tear it down again. That. She did not realize that. Of course that, she didn't realize that. It was decades you, after she I, was I born. bet you yelled at her. Did, don't you realize there was one there when I was a boy? But anyway, can I get to the point? Go ahead. So there were all these these weird things to play on. There were these little, uh, like, French fries. You know, those little, uh, you, you sit on them, they got this giant spring, and they go back and forth. Yes. You, you hanging would, out with Mayor you, McCheese You'd ride the, uh, the fries, and then they had uh-huh. the big spinny that was built like uh, Grimace, big Grimace. purple spinny. And yes, they had a they had a Mayor McCheese. Remember that guy? <laughs> mayor McCheese. He was the mayor of the McDonald's play place. And he had a head that was a hamburger. His head was a hamburger. And he wore a hat on top of his hamburger head. And the the toy was like you climbed up this ladder into Mayor McCheese's head, and then you could climb up a little higher and you could look outside his hat. I'm sure I've told this story before. So one day I go up into his hat and I stuck my head out of the hole in his hat and I was looking around. And I don't know if you know anything about a uh, head, but you have ears, okay? Ears. Mm-hmm. So my head goes through the deal and then I tried to pull it out and I was stuck. I was stuck in Mayor McCheese's hat. Couldn't get my head out. Man, I was freaking out. Especially and my, when the hamburger creeped up behind you. That my must have been. parents are inside. And uh, I was like, oh, my God. And then you know what I hear in the distance? Sirens. Ah. Oh. Ooh. I thought, they. well, there's only one place I could be going. <laughs> me. My head is stuck in Mayor McCheese's hat. They must be coming with the jaws of life or some welding machine or something. Maybe they'll have to take my head off and put it back on like uh, Shibata. So I heard this coming and man, pop my head back on through. Ears bleeding all over the place in the back. Still got a lump back here. Brutal. But anyway, the point is, there is a point. I was on the uh, I was on your on, head. I was on the internet the other day. I don't even know why I was like searching for this, but I was searching for like old school McDonald's play places, and there's a guy that has a site that's all about old school McDonald's play places. He's like gone back and he buys all of the old toys that he can find, oh, and he's like God. built one in his yard or something, and it's like it's a blast from the past, bro. If you're my age, you go and look at this, and you're like. Oh my god, I forgot all about that hamburger. What a freaking creep that guy was. The hamburger? Mm-hmm. It's like what a horrible time to grow up. I don't even know how I'm still here. I look I at all this stuff like the kids play on nowadays, all this fun happy stuff. There's happy faces and furry animals and everything. Dude, I was running around running from the hamburger and spinning around in some big purple blob of goo and Mayor McCheese tried to chop my ears off. A horrible life. But anyway, you guys got to find that site. I'll, I'll see if I can find it because I sent it to my wife. Show her how old I was. Anyway. Scariest bastard up in there was Ronald McDonald himself. Yeah, that guy was another creep. Yeah, clown? Oh, God. A horrible clown is what he was. But they did have the good giveaways because, like, the great Muppet Caper and all those movies that came out, they used to give you, like, the big, thick tumbler glass with, you know, the scene from the movie on there and everything. Those were awesome. Dude, the the freaking guy's name was Grimace, okay? Yeah. You know what a Grimace is? Like, a mean look. Mm. His name was Grimace. We're supposed to play in this guy? And then he gets spun around a bit till you barf? God. Grimace. Those were always a bad idea anyway. We had one of those at my elementary school. That, the, it's like a the toy. Games. Evil stair. Hey, one you want to those... go play in the evil stair? <laughs> Come on, Pace. Go jump in that thing. 
things that spin around at like mox you know warp speed because kids are spinning it and like kids would fly off of it we had like gravel under ours and it was concrete where we were why they even had that i have no idea but i would assume because i never remember seeing one at my kid's school or anything like that those things are all long gone now due to insurance uh, issues and such like i'm assuming what happened to all those play places are there even play places attached to to these types yeah they're of inside now they're inside and they're plastic and they're safe. And like, like besides, there's Chick-fil-A, no creeps. I can see, not when you're there. Right. Anyway, uh, Drew McIntyre has not signed a new contract yet. He is being booked for shows in uh, in I believe May, and the belief is that he likely is going to resign. I mean, he's in a great spot. I think he's. Uh, I think he's having the time of his life. I don't know that, but you know, I see guys that do characters like this. I mean, when he made that, when he said that line, that is a legendary line now. I I don't know what I believe in. I'm not much of a religious man, but I prayed this would happen, and it did. <laughs> that was the greatest line. The now he's got hater. the shirt. Yeah. I mean, man. This has got to be very cathartic for him, and you seem to, he gives that vibe. We've seen this with other guys as well, too, in the past, when they do have the ability to kind of like be a full-fledged heel and sound like they're speaking from the heart and speaking their truth. He's doing an excellent job of it. He's been fantastic. So even if he doesn't stay there, this has been wonderful for whatever happens with him. First says, I uh, think it'd be funny if he didn't re-sign. What, and goes to AEW? Listen, I'm not going to dissuade anybody from going to AEW, but who are you not going to push if Drew McIntyre goes to <laughs> AEW and gets a push? There's 5,000 guys right there, and you can't push every single one of them. Got it. I mean, Jimmy, Chris, and guys looked, coming back. Brian, and let's be honest here, what reputation do they have of making someone better off than they were before in WWE? Hey, he's this is the best he's ever been. He is. He's fantastic. And you know what? Randy Orton, I'm not saying it's over, but he's been on the downslide. He's been gone for a while. He's out. AJ Styles, I guess he's still up in the air on what you're going to do with him, but they have... There is a hole and a, a room that he can fit in right now, the same way Damian Priest, who's, you know, even older, but, you know, has got a spot right now where they have the ability to break out. Roman Reigns is what he is. Cody Rhodes is what he is. Other than that, I mean, there's a lot of room to maneuver there if you're somebody like a Drew McIntyre because they've kept him impressive, they've kept him fresh, and they've kept him with, you know, some actual dignity to his character and some belief that fans have in his character. So, to me, he this 2024 could be a great year for him. I know some people are looking at Sami Zayn as, as possibly he could have a great year, but Drew McIntyre, I think, is in the best position of almost anybody in that company. Hey, do you remember when Lenny lost those quarters to me? I do. Do you remember why it was? Yes. He was sure Jay White was beating MJF. Mm-hmm. I said, no, that ain't going to happen. Tap him out. I but he, the point is, they were doing such a great job building up Jay White that he thought he was actually going to win the title. Now, where is Jay White right now? He's part of the Bang Bang, bang, scissor, bang scissor Gang, scissor gang. doing a 12-man tag on Rampage, okay? Now, my, my point is this. Like, okay... Let's say you want Jay White to be top of the card. All right, well, who's not going to be top of the card? Samoa Joe? Swerve? Will Ospreay? I mean, who do you want to take out of that position? Because at some point, these people are going to get lost in the shuffle, inevitably. It is It is not like, I don't care how good a booker you are, whatever. There's too much talent for everybody to get pushed. Uh, I, I... So the idea that, okay, well, you know, let's bring in 10 more top stars. You're going to end up with a problem. And True. at some point, at some point, you are going to have people that are going to want to go the other way because they're going to see, well, holy smokes, you know, I could be a top star there and I'm going to be, uh, you know, wherever here. It will happen eventually. It hasn't happened yet, but it will. You're Just right inevitable. About that. You're right about that, but there's a numbers game here, too. You should have a pick six of three, you know, six people at the top three feuds where guys are as serious, the, the most serious guys in the company, and then you're supposed to have an upper mid card underneath that where you have a couple more people that you can rely on and move up and down as you need to, and that's been the biggest problem with AEW. It's not having the talent. It's utilizing them and keeping them fresh and keeping them hot from feud to feud and giving them some credibility. Back in a moment, Observer Live.
go, I mean, excuse me, the twins, and then, yeah. My God. What's up? <sighs> Trying to go through the Seattle Times archive here. Yeah? And uh, the problem is that uh, pre-1985, uh, you have to go through, like, the, the... They've scanned them all. And on top of that, not only do you have to go th through all these scans, but the Seattle Times back then had, like, the old-school TV schedule. So there's like 5 million hits for the Muppets because every time the newspaper came out, they'd tell you when the Muppets were on TV. Like it changed. You know, if we had a better <sighs> producer for this show, like maybe Scooter, you know, maybe maybe we could be helped out with this a little bit more, you know? Dom's obviously not doing his legwork during the break. Tom wasn't even born yet. He doesn't remember Gonzo. He's got no clue about what's going on there. Pigs in space. Some of the great skits that took place from over the years. All right. No transition to got a new there. set for AW Dynamite. Talk about the Muppet Show. Tony Khan on X Wednesday wrote a Valentine's Day poem. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, <laughs> which he announced a new set for Dynamite will debut on March sixth in Duluth, Georgia. The first episode after... The, he is such a message boarder. You know that? <laughs> it's, yeah. There's another word I'd like to use, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> yeah. AEW Dynamite is red. AEW Dynamite is blue. Until the Wednesday after Revolution, when we'll have a brand new set for you. 
Does he send in poems with a granny show while he's at it? L- l- let me tell you something. Happy Valentine's Day to all of you. Got a new you got set a lot coming. of nerve. It was the dorks like that that, that that made you, pal, that were reading F4W and, and laughing there hysterically when it came to those uh, flying mares that uh, Frank A. Gotch would uh, talk about. Yeah, I'm surprised Tony hasn't tried to sign Frank A. Gotch. <laughs> guess he's dead. Yeah, 136. He's pretty old right now. Something like that. So we have the, uh, we finally know what's going on. I told you guys about this for a long time, but now it's official. So, at the Dos Leyendas card at Arena Mexico on March 29, it will be CMLL versus BCC at Arena Mexico. Brian Danielson, Claudio Castagnoli, John Moxley, and Wheeler Yuta against Blue Panther. Finally, they got the guy back they'll beat. Blue Panther, Mystico, Ultimo Guerrero, and Volador Jr. They better get that Wheeler Yuta back because, like, right now this CMLL crew... They can't beat anybody in the BCC. Just one loss after another. But now we've got the match, which uh, they will assuredly win at Arena Mexico. And uh, Brian Danielson gets his chance to work with Blue Panther. Ultimo Guerrero, who's still out there going. Yeah. And, uh, He's still awesome, too. you got to see yeah. him out there. What a great deal he is. Look, and this needs to be, I will give a plug to... Uh, That's the, the main event, by the way. Cubs fan. That's the main event. Yeah? Well, you're surprised yeah. by that? I'm just pointing it out. At Lucha Blog on Twitter slash X, how to watch that show. You do actually have to spend the $35 to be a part of. Yes, it's $35. $35? Yes, they have three tiers. I'm raising prices. Three tiers for CMLL on YouTube, the $9 tier, the $25 tier, and then the $35 tier. And that's where you're going to be able to see this show, unless you can get a bootleg stream of Televisa Nueve out of Mexico City and watch it that way on April 8th, okay? Chink is trying to to say this okay because 35 is the live shows. Well, we get the That's, live shows wait. on Peacock for like four ninety five. If we no, own. it's it, the thing is, it's not usually the live. Show. They are they they add one more show and then like they add two matches or something is what they're supposed to be doing on that tier. You know, essentially the twenty five dollar tier is the way to go because that's what gets you the Arena Mexico. That's shows the way on, to go. To, well, on Tuesday and Friday, I like watching that. Look, I like watching CMLL live, so I love that Friday deal that they have Tuesdays and Fridays. I like being able to do that. Otherwise, it's not that long of a wait. Like, this is taking place on March 29th. If you pay for the $9 tier on YouTube, you'll get to see it on April 9th. Okay? So, you don't have to wait. I can really, handle that. Yeah, you don't have to wait that long. I could long probably to fly to it, Mexico but... for less than buying that service for a year. <laughs> yeah, but then you got to fly. That's true. I don't like that. It's no fun. Tuesday's NXT, 650,000 viewers in a point seventeen. So they're still up year over year, particularly in 18 to 49. Rotted 1.75 million and a point five six in 18 to 49. And uh, 1.79, 1.85, and 1.60 were the hours. And uh, those are your numbers, everybody. Breaking news. Did you review NXT yesterday? I did. The show probably sucked, got, except for that main event. Probably got way too into it, uh, more than we, we really should have. But a lot of it didn't end up on Hulu for Filthy, which is, again, probably What a lucky a guy. Thing. Really? I ran over that card, everybody. And I said... Should have done it with a car. I said, man, this ain't looking like a good show. And remember my buddy, what did he say? Let's see if I can find it. He told me I was going to be wrong. Not that you kept the receipts or anything. One of those deals. Yeah, I'm going to keep a receipt on this one. <laughs> Let's see if I can find it here. He was he was sure. Oh, that the all of the women's matches with green women were going to knock everyone's socks off? Yeah. Well, anyway, I can't they find it. They did not. Oh, yeah, going to expect an apology tomorrow. You keep Uh-oh. bashing this NXT lineup for tonight. <laughs> hey, listen, I love this show more than anybody. That show sucked. That's well... I'll I'll give it a good skewering tonight. I'll give it a good skewering tonight on the Brian and Vinny show. But the main event. Hey, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You guys think I'm kidding? And if you don't watch the show, just shut up about it, okay? Because the people that do watch will agree with me. The best team in WWE is Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin. 
And not only are they the best team in the ring, but like you got to go back and watch this segment that they did backstage. Mm-hmm. These guys are so great. They're, I mean, and it really stuck out on NXT because most of these backstage segments are atrocious. These, these, you know, Saved by the Bell style, style skits or whatever. These guys are so real. They're so believable. They're like, they were awesome. Two old football players giving each other hell. But like, they're great. Yes. They don't, it's not like they're acting. It's not like they're doing some storyline. They're so believable and they're so real. And then, no, they're better than Finn and Priest, Jingu. Don't argue with me. Either watch it or shut up about it, okay? Finn and Priest are a great WWE tag team, okay? They do everything right. They do nothing wrong, okay? The matches are good. But I'll bet you, you ask them to watch these matches with Corbin and Braun Breaker, and they'll go, okay, man, like, they're awesome. And Braun's got that shirt. You know that... um, uh, best spear in the business shirt. Uh huh. Which, by the way, I mean, you honestly think in WWE that they're going to have him wear a best spear in the business shirt if their plan isn't him and Roman Reigns at some point, like in the next it's, year? It's like they didn't realize that Braun and Mello were going to be, you know, generational opponents for each other for a long, long time, right? And I told you guys, listen, I love Yoda Suji. He should be the IWGP heavyweight champion. He does not have a better spear than Braun Breaker. Goldberg does not have a better spear than Braun Breaker. Roman Reigns does not have a better spear than Braun Breaker. Braun Breaker does, in fact, have the best spear in this business. My God, Stax got murdered. (laughs) He was murdered. Would I ever take that spear? Hell no. Not in a million years. Would you ever do a crisscross with Braun? He nope. may kill himself doing that and then kill you. Nope. He's got a better spear than Rhino. I love the gore. It's better than Rhino's. Like, this guy spears you like, I don't even know what. You owe him a lot of money. You owe him your children. Like, this spear is unreal. That match was great. They won the titles. I was so happy. But the rest of the show was abysmal. Abysmal. And that's coming from their biggest fan. Now, the Dynamite show. <laughs> let me tell you what was awesome on this show. This, you know, you know this Dax fella thinks I'd never say anything good about him? That's all I do is say good things about Dax. But I believe he's a selective listener or he's a non-listener. Mm-hmm. He's like one of those other nerds on the internet that doesn't listen and gets mad. This Dax John Moxley match, it was so awesome. Didn't and I said much. on Observer Radio last night, I go, this is like the best AW match I can remember in like I don't even remember the last the last time. And then I go on the internet today and you know people are saying this was Brian said this was the best AW match of the year. And of course my my first thought was, I never said that. But I got thinking about it and I was like was there a match I liked more than this in AW this year? I'm not sure. I loved it. Well, it helped that it was mostly a wrestling match. It wasn't ring. even a wrestling match. It was mostly a fight. A fight. And then they wrestled. <laughs> they beat death jitsu. the death out of each other. <laughs> and they wrestled. And the most amazing thing to me is that, like... It was like 15, 16 minutes before they got a This Is Awesome chant. I was like, did you guys just file into the building? Like, <laughs> where have you been? This match was so great. It was, Brian, but you know what? It should be noted. Let's stop with all the headbutt spots. It's not that. Well, it's a you lot didn't of need people. that. And here's the thing. You have a lot of heat being put on these guys for the choke of Dax and laying out cash next to him. And then the camera shot at the end where Dax is coming to. That was unnecessary and took away from the violence that it was supposed to be. The crowd was already doing that by cheering these heels do this dastardly stuff. But then you got Dax waking up after supposedly being choked out and getting brain damage. Or at least, you know, the possibility of that being hyped by the announcers. Small bad move there, I thought. Can't believe all these people that are so appalled about the kissing spots. Bro, it's 2024. Let me tell you a story, okay? Let me tell you a story. 
There so, was a guy who drank blood on a pay per view once. That's I I once worked in a gymnastics facility, and you kissed a dude. And we would like do that. we would do these matches during overnighters with my buddies. Overnight? But like nobody that worked there had ever actually seen me do a real wait, wait pro a wrestling second. match in the ring. Okay, this is turning into a custom. Can I get going it? here? Sorry, nobody had ever seen me do an actual pro wrestling match in the ring. We had all these local shows. I was like, hey, if you guys want to come, you know, we'll be at the uh, you know the B and I Marketplace in Tacoma. They're like, that ain't happening. But anyway, <laughs> so uh, you know, we wrestled all over the place, and and uh, one day we went to the Dalles, Oregon. Which, by the way, what kind of a name is that? The Dalles? That's what it's called. The Dalles. That's the city name? Oh, that's the name of the city. The Dalles. The Dalles. So we go to the Dalles for this this show, and I think it was uh, me and Buddy versus Richie Magnet and Vinny. Okay? Imagine that match. So we're in this like little high school or whatever, and we're doing this match, and uh, Buddy and I are the heels, and you know we're, we're just being heels and everything like that. And these fans in Oregon, in the Dalles, decide that they're going to chant some really homophobic stuff about us. Oh. And they're calling us the worst names, and they're saying horrible things. And so we're doing this match or whatever, and I think Richie and, and Vinny won. And so they leave, and you know, me and Buddy are all sad in the ring afterwards. And the, the, the fans are just, they're all over us, these horrible homophobic chants. And so all of a sudden, Buddy just grabs me and he goes, close your mouth. And he goes, and he just kisses me right on the lips. I had no idea it was coming. Didn't even do the And the crowd's like, ah, oh, now they're furious and everything like that. <laughs> and we, we're, we're leaving. We're just like, my God, look at these. Uh, I don't like to say the word, but we're starting to head to the back. I look up in the crowd. Whole crew from the gymnastics place drove all the way to the Dalles. That was their uh, integration. Back in a moment, Observer Live. I think it's my sobriety that keeps me going. Um, since I got clean and sober 15 years ago, it's it has put this kind of new shine on my life that I need to kick it into gear and continue growing and continue what I love to do, which is this wonderful business we're in and have some fun. And it's all about having fun. If you can't have fun at your job, then you don't really need to be in it. And I'm very good at what I do. So I love this business. And I just, uh, each time I go out there, it is an opportunity for me to be kind of a teacher for the youngins in the back, because I'm very old school with a little new school attitude. So without the old, without the old school, there is no new school, right? So it's like, all these people do the, all these impressive things all the time. And then what I like to do is completely different than that. And that's to tell a story. It's very important to me because the fans kind of, they have made us, right? So without the fans, we're nothing. And the, the fans that are uh, going through their day and they might be having a, a terrible day or whatever, and they turn on the TV on AEW just to watch us, it is my job to take them out of that day and entertain them, but make them feel something. That's the most important thing is to move somebody and to make them feel something. Because if you make them feel something, they're going to come back. And so that's that's kind of my my goal every time that I you know go out there. It's um, yeah, I get a lot ner I get a lot more nervous at my age for some reason, which is really weird. Um, and I think they're good nerves, but and I've always been nervous, but really since I've turned 50 it's it's like every time i go out there i'm just like oh my god man i can't mess up i can't mess up because you know there's people out there they're gonna be like oh dustin needs to retire and i hate that i don't want that i want to kill it each time i want to put on a banger and uh tell a good psychological story for the fans to enjoy i don't think i really need to prove myself anymore but I think it's just an internal thing that I need to prove to myself, hey, I can still go out there and do this, right? But as far as proving to anybody else, I, I believe people know how good I am and, and that I can go out there and wrestle circles around some of the young ones, even still today. And um, we have some incredible talent, and I'm just trying to keep up. I'm just trying to keep, in a word, young, right? And it's very difficult when you're 54, almost 55, but just to throw in a, a couple of new things by evolving your characters and 
changing things up every once in a while. I'm good at that. And that gives me a little more life and gives me a little longer to kind of enjoy it right before I need to switch it up again. And I think that's the key to my career is evolving. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper BB, also, also of Wrestling Observer. I've got Com. to ask you, how was he as a kisser? <laughs> Prickly. That's what I remember. I was like, that's weird. Very prickly. Anyway. You get to kiss Christian to, to, to try to compare, you know? Orange know Cassidy and... Well, there, there's actually doing. a kiss in the open of the, uh, uh, the Brian and uh, Vinny show. I think I uh, I kiss old uh, Mark. Oh, I thought you say show. Oreo when you were all hammered. By the way, Mark's uh, Mark's little dog is in uh, rough shape. Oh. So if you would like to, uh, he's got a GoFundMe up. If you want to uh, donate, you can go to my ex at Brian Alvarez. The link is up there. Any help would be appreciated. And uh, you can also go up there and Jeremy from HBG put up a picture of an old rusted Mayor McCheese. With no hole in his helmet, by the way. I think they stopped making those after what happened to me. But anyway, the other great thing on the show was that Orange Cassie Matt Taven match, Last Man Standing. That was a great match. And uh, Orange Cassidy won after Trent took the bullet. Roddy got sent outside. He tried to interfere. Trent could answer, or Taven could answer the count. Orange retained the title. You know, one of these days, that Trent's turning on Orange. It's going to happen one of these days. Hmm. Could be 2044, but one of these days. It's definitely going to happen. Oh, man. No more best friends, just chaos, possibly? Well, he'll still have other best friends. Well. I mean, it's a group called the best friends. Yeah, but they get rid of the other best friends, and it's just him and Okada against the world. When I was a kid, you had, like, one best friend. That's why it was called the best. And you Everyone know what? else was just your friends. That's the friend that greases up your head and gets it out of Mayor and McCheese when you really No one greased to. my head. Greased my own head. I think it's time to wrap it up today. I'll be back later on tonight with Vinny, WrestlingObserver.com, video.f4wonline.com, and we'll talk to you next time, Wrestling Observer Live.